book and says, yeehaw. <laughs> Thank you. Th thanks, thanks for turning out. Yeah, I, re I really mean that. It's really not an easy decision to make to come into a room full of people. So, But Rote Tack have done a brilliant job. I hope you all feel safe and comfortable and, and at ease. It's so lovely to see you. The days will return when we're all hugging each other and drinking beer and packing this place out. So, yeah. But in the meantime, look after each other and stay safe and all the rest of it. Um, welcome. Um, we also have an online audience, so I'd like to welcome the online audience who are watching on, on Facebook and YouTube. It's lovely to welcome you to this very special day. And just so you know at home, you may not be able to see this, but this is a complete sellout at the Rope Tackle. It's, uh, and that means uh, we've got our lovely audience of, of 60 who are all socially distanced and in bubbles and wearing masks. And uh, The stream, if you're watching the stream, you can watch it for free if you, if you like. Do what you like. It's, it's a free stream. But if you are feeling flush, then you can buy tickets. So you can do that at any point. There's a live page on my website, richarddarnett.com, and you can go to the live page. There are links on the uh, thing for the broadcast. So please do that as well. Welcome to the launch of Rewilding. This is an album that was begun in January 2020 and was completed in, in August this year. Rewilding goes live on all digital streaming platforms today at 4.37 p.m. local time, uh, which is sunset in Sussex, where we are now on Halloween. And um, today, of course, is also the the festival of Sawain. It's the end of the Celtic year, so it's a very mysterious contemplative part of the year and a suitably, well, a perfect moment, really, for me to launch an album that's so intrinsically tied in with the natural world. And I'm, I'm really chuffed to say that today the internet streaming services will sing to the tune of the natural world as well because at the exact moment the sun sets on Shoreham Beach, millions of little packets of information containing the music of rewilding will be simultaneously made available all over planet Earth. The sunset casts its light over the River Ada, those online digitized forces which an artist like myself normally has absolutely no control over. Digitized forces which funnel unimaginable quantities of cash into the pockets of the thieving service providers who share virtually nothing with creative artists and musicians and haven't done over so many years. Today they will all comply and switch on my album at a moment governed entirely by my own whimsical notion and the movement of the stars and planet Earth. So to the album... Rewilding. This, um, this album was created to be listened to on vinyl, as I know many of you know. And I'd just like you to cast your minds back to the ritual of the first listening. When you buy a new record, the chair's carefully positioned between the speakers, refreshments to hand, a suitable reading light allowing the sleeve to be studied in minute detail. Doors closed, phones pulled out of the wall, family members asked to leave the room, especially my mum. Only then can the amp be switched on and turned to the correct volume and the new album discovered. So what you're going to experience today is really a kind of exaggerated version of that ritual and you're about to hear the two sides of the album, which we're going to play from the mastered audio. So you're going to hear the recorded music from the album. Well, that's going to be augmented by some wonderful musicians who played on those recordings. So it's an unusual experiment that we're doing today. There will be an interval between side one and two, a brief interval, and you're going to be served drinks. And you guys at home, streaming can uh, go and put the kettle on, crack open another beer, 
Side one today is, um, side one of this album is, is set above ground, so this is set in the superterranean world. Track one, Aurochs. The Aurochs um, is an extinct grazing creature, an enormous cow, basically. Track one is inspired by the large grazing beasts of the land who contribute so much to nature's process of self-care, I suppose, is a way of thinking of it. Track two, the title is in Middle English, For All Mankine Neda, for, all, for the Sake of All Mankind. For the Sake of All Mankind, a self-explanatory title for anybody interested in conservation. Track three is full of energy and optimism and is aptly called NEP inspired by the wonderful rewilding project at NEP in Sussex and the subtitle of that track is The Return again self-explanatory track four is simply called Leaf of course the concept of rewilding is at the heart of this album and I have to say that my lucky encounters with the NEP estate and the work of Isabella Tree, Charlie Burrell and Penny Green are really central to this album. Rewilding the album is, is a sort of instinctive, kind of almost childlike response of mine to a concept that can seem so simple, but I'm sure to Isabella, Charlie and Penny it's really not that simple because the world isn't designed for setting aside farmland, um, just like it's not designed for, for the arts, really. It makes you wonder what the world is designed for. Perhaps that will change. So against many combined odds, to celebrate the beauty of what nature still appears to be prepared to do for all of us, we're going to um, play for you Rewilding, Side One, The Superterranean.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Wow. Goodness me. Amazing. Um, lovely to be back doing a gig. There's going to be an interval, and I think that drinks are brought for you. So unless you've got your hip flask handy, someone will come round and present you with a pint of Guinness and a rum and black. A nice cup of tea. Uh, I think the interval is going to be at around about 10 minutes. So we'll be back with side two very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.
just a little taster of uh, a snippet from, from side two, which you're about to hear. A little guitar section. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, part two. I'd like to talk about the artwork for rewilding the gatefold cover, which was created by the English artist John Everett. Go and look at John Everett on the interweb. He's a remarkable man. He has been described not as a surrealist, but as an unrealist. Um, it's really lovely that Lu Louise and I this, this week have been working with John um, to sort out the sale of limited edition prints, which will be available very soon, actually. That's, that's all official now. So signed prints of the acrylic canvas, which is the front of the album cover here, are going to be available. So there'll be links on, the, on Facebook and YouTube and all that, all that jazz. So please look out for that. I was really chuffed when John agreed to work on the album cover. I had a couple of his books, and uh, it was quite overwhelming when, when he not only said that he'd love to do it, but he said it had always been an ambition of his to do a vinyl sleeve. Um, I imagined he would have done a few, but uh, apparently this is his first one. And when John was studying, he, he speaks of his, uh, well, him and his mates wanted to be, you know, uh, John Dean um, and uh, you know make vinyl covers and I feel the same I went to the Royal College of Music and the reason I went there was because I wanted to make a record you know maybe just one or two but I wanted to make a record and and then along came CDs so I kind of missed out a bit but I'm making up for it now the inner sleeve the inner sleeve was drawn by the artist and soil scientist David St. Moore Shiel who's a wonderful man. Uh, he sometimes paints using natural materials, and I've seen paintings that he's done using soil and earth and all sorts of other things. But what he's done is to create a sleeve where you see the root systems on the subterranean side, and there's a different approach to the superterranean side, and you can see the musicians also um, reappear as uh, protozoas. So that's the bit that you, when you sit down and do the ritual, you pull the inner sleeve out and you can sit and study that as well. That's the work of David Smore Shiel. Um, I have to say that the, the rewilding vinyl still hasn't arrived from Holland. We went to this wonderful company, Deep Grooves, who are the most ecologically sound vinyl pressing plant that we could find. And they're lovely guys, but they've been subject, subject to COVID restrictions as well. So they've said that they, they now really believe that it will be here middle to end of next week. So it's going to be within the week. So if you've, if you've ordered your vinyl, it won't be long. And we're taking orders out in the foyer. And you streamers, please do order copies from my website. And it will be with you very soon. 
We'll continue with, with side two in just a moment. Uh, but first, I, I, I really must just thank my musicians today, Daisy and Django Durrant, and the legendary Mr. Brian Gullen. So please, can you put your hands together? You can clap them again later, but... Brian plays like an angel on the on the album, and uh, wherever he goes, he spreads magic, so it's lovely to have him at this special event. Uh, Felix would have played on the album, uh, but during lockdown, he became tape op for the studio, so Felix did a lot of the engineering on, on rewilding, and he's today taking photos. So well done, Felix, I appreciate your help. Rooney Louise as well, they've all supported this project, so... And, and last but by no means least, my, my dear friend Peter Lisney, with whom I run my online music academy, richarddurrantacademy.com. Peter is here with his cameras and his general professionalism, and he's filming today. So, Peter, thanks for all your help, mate, and a round of applause for Peter. <laughs> Clap at home. After you've heard side two, we're hoping there will be time for a Q&A session, so you can, you can stick around. And, um, and quiz us. We're all going to be here on stage. You can chat to us about anything you'd like to know about, about this whole process and about the album. And if you're online, you can send in um, your questions on YouTube and Facebook and we will respond to that as well. And uh, don't forget, you can buy online tickets, so um, please do so if you feel flush. Um, all the links are on the website. Right. Enough of all that. Let's think about the music on side two, the subterranean side of rewilding. This whole side is set below ground in the busy complexities of the subterranean world. And as the offerings of the dung beetles draw our attention downwards, I invite you to consider the world beneath your feet. <coughs> A place where one handful of earth contains more life forms than the number of humans that have ever walked upon the earth. And this subterranean world of highly organized biological structures, these bizarre and plentiful life forms that nurture root systems, exchange nutrients and flocculate the soil. They can control floodplains, digest toxins, and trap vast amounts of carbon. So the complexity of this world presents us with new scientific and philosophical perspectives, and it really does offer hope for ways of dealing with climate change. Suffice to say, the impact of rewilding projects on the subterranean world is profound. So side two, the subterranean, uh, there's only three tracks. Step Gently, inspired by the William Butler Yeats poem, The Clock of Heaven, Step Gently. And that runs into a, a minimalist influence piece called Triskelion. And the Triskelion design is a very ancient idea, actually. It's a three, it's a th kind of three-spoked wheel. And there's a, an English interpretation of the Triskelion, which is known as Tinner's Rabbits, which you will see on the screen as part of John's artwork. The three rabbits joined at the ear, and as they tumble along in a circular motion, they always land on their feet. Last of all, the hero of the subterranean world. The last track is called Big Fat Earthworm, Lumbricus Terrestris. So, I hope you enjoy rewilding the subterranean side. Thank you very much.
microphone. Well, why don't you make yourselves comfortable, folks, and... Uh, We got there's a little perch here, Dave. If you want to sit, there's Brian. There's a chair. Yeah. Brian's going to get his comfy chair. One of those big dad's army camp beds, maybe. Well, thank you for turning out. It's um, not an easy decision in these times to come into a room full of other people, but um, so lovely to see so many friends. Anyone got any questions or observations or general witty remarks, Jonathan? Optimism. Jonathan's talking about uh, he, he got a sense of optimism, which is which is just so fantastic. Yeah, really. That that's why the album the album became more and more focused on rewilding, and it was a largely a lockdown project because there is such hope from the natural world that that, that nature is showing us in these rewilding projects. And yeah, the the canny earthworm is a real engineer at work, and uh, there's a, a lot of good that that little creature does. Um, so yeah, the optimism is definitely there, and it's it, the, the 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 rewilding thing can't take place unless there's an input of energy. That's where the proxy species come in, and the grazing animals, and the rooting animals, and the flocculating the earth. There has to be energy put in for change to happen, and I've tried to reflect that in the music, particularly the earthworm. It's a properly subterranean piece with the contrabassoon of uh, Brian just burrowing through the music. <laughs> anyone else? We got anyone online, Peter? Stella. Stella, well, th thank you. Thank you for watching and listening, Stella. We made a, a really tough decision not to produce anything on CD um, because v v uh, CD sales have, have, have fell s fallen so sharply. Vinyl has outsold CD since the noughties for a very long time now and with the streaming platforms taking more of a grip on the music business, we just couldn't afford to produce CDs as well. And I also wanted to make the point that this is very much a vinyl project really i i do dream of people listening to it in two halves in the right track order whilst looking through the artwork so i i know there are people that want the cd stella sem, send me an email and i'll burn you a copy of the cd i will do that my name's in the phone book or if you googleize me you will find me you know how to contact me on facebook or on my email I, i'll always run off a cd for people but really that's not the idea the idea is is to um, have the thing in big on a gatefold, and that will be here by next week. So, God only knows we've waited for it. Peter. That's my big sister. Hooray. Cheers, Anne. Uh, she was listening to this in her car um, in the rain underneath the hill where the Uffington White Horse is. So, cheers, Anne. See you soon. I yeah. Uh, in, interesting question, actually, because just as I was about to release my String Henge album in 2018, I was invited by Penny Green, the wildlife officer at NEP, to come and take part in a a gig, a one o'clock in the morning gig with a, a little audience and the folk singer Sam Lee and we walked around NEP and we sat, um, ultimately we ended up at a bramble bush with a nightingale in it and we played with the nightingale, we had a real um, conversation going with this amazing little bird and the audience sat and, and Sam and I played and the bird sang its heart out. And, and that was a, a, a real turning point, actually, for me, because String Henge, as many of you know, was my double album. It was, it was a fairly political album. I was deeply upset by the election of Trump, the referendum, all the stuff that was going on at that time. And I was trying to find a way forward for myself. String Henge gave me that, because it enabled me to think about the landscape of Britain 
and not only to make the album about British landscape, but to cycle the length of Britain with some, some very dear friends. And, uh, and I found that a real healing process. But just before we went on the big bike ride from Orkney to Shoreham, um, I played with that nightingale. And some of the things which Penny said um, during her amazing guided walk around the rewilding project really stayed with me. And they re-emerged during lockdown and took on more and more importance as the album morphed into rewilding. And we were all getting used to this new world that we, that we live in. So I hope that rewilding will be part of that new world. Um, as well as I hope the arts will also be part of that new world. But uh, you never know in this weird country we live in who's looking after who. So look after yourselves, I think, is the answer. Look after your friends and your families. There was a, there was a question. Yeah. Ah, oh, Colin. Sorry, I can't see you. I've got lights in my eyes. Colin, good to see you, mate. I have to confess, there was a difference knowing that it was going to come out on vinyl. The Hammond organ came out. Um, my, my love of the album Hocus Pocus, my love of Griffon's Midnight Mushrooms, um, Tubular Bells, th these albums are running through my, my very being, and I still play those three albums. Brian is, was a member of Griffon, still is a member of Griffon. So having Brian play on the album was a, an incredible experience for me. And we've become very good friends, and, and it's a, a great honour to be working with this man. But yeah, it, it was different. The, 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 the textures, the layers of sound were very much in my mind's ear as a vinyl outcome. And when I took delivery of the test pressing 10 days ago, and, and I had to sit and listen to three test pressings on very beautiful heavy vinyl, 180 gram vinyl, it sounded utterly different. And now I've been playing it in my studio uh, at 96 kilohertz and 24 bit audio, which is very, very high resolution. And you can hear, you can hear right into the music. It's really quite amazing. And it's all around you. The, the stereo spatial quality of those recordings is quite something. But when I heard it on the vinyl, there was a lot of punch about the low end and a lot of clarity about the very high stuff, the little prayer symbols and the bird song which are field recordings from, from NEP, made by Richard Beeson, I have to say. Uh, the clarity of, of either end of the spectrum w was astonishing, and it really shocked me. And as I listened to it, I thought of that stupid little pin. How does it do that? How can you hear a contrabassoon and, and, a, and a, a glockenspiel at the same time going down a little stylus? It's astonishing. There was a lot of congestion in the mids, I found, because it is a lossy format. Vinyl is a lossy format, and I could hear... Just now and then, I couldn't listen into the middle of the sound. But everything else, and the Hammond organ sings on vinyl. It re not all vinyl sounds good, but I think Hammond, well, Hammond organ sounds good on a cassette, doesn't it, really? Good question, Cole. Does that answer your question? Good man. Thanks for coming. Happy birthday for Tuesday, by the way. Monday, Monday. Thank you, thank you. Didn't want to tell anyone, but it's my birthday on Monday, you know. <laughs> and Collins. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you thank you for that we, we all carved them as a family last night and, and Peter Peter was there as well Peter carved um, some of the more surreal ones actually I have to say <laughs> we had a lot of fun with the pumpkins and, and we after this gig we're going up onto the Devil's Dyke to walk around with the pumpkins and, uh, and then we're going to go home and have a, a Celtic New Year feast so we're going to celebrate the start of this time of year it, it, it felt right to do it on this day so what, what was it like for you guys? Because you've played, you've played in a very early stage. These guys at the front here are ukulele players, and in January, February, I, I use them as guinea pigs. I write music, and we all meet together and, and rehearse these pieces and do a gig in here. So some of that piece has been played on this stage before. What was it like hearing it in its finished form? You did a wonderful job. Were your fingers twitching when you were? Yeah, yeah it, it's weird for me when I put the Fox's head on and did my Peter Gabriel bit. 
I was, I was thinking, Jonathan, that one is a knuckle cruncher, isn't it? That, yeah. The thing about minimalist music, it's only a few notes, but if you've got to repeat notes again and again and again, you can end up with a carbuncle on your, on your chill blames, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Peter. Elliot, Elliot's asking if we ship vinyl to the Netherlands. It's come from the Netherlands, <laughs> it will have done. And I'm really chuffed because I've got some very, very dear friends in uh, around Nijmegen, a, a, a wonderful town called Bemmel in Holland. And I really hope some of them are listening. I, I love going to Holland. And so fitting that with the Focus Hocus Pocus thing going on, that this album should be pressed by that very, very eco-friendly company in Holland. And yeah, of course we'll post it anywhere, mate. Of course we will. Yeah, and you can buy flax as well. Another online question. Stu. Hello, Stu. I would love to tour the album as the burning deck, which is a kind of default setting for my, my larger pieces, um, and to invite some, some friends along to do that. So, yeah, but who knows when that will be? We really don't know. We, we just hope and pray that we're going to come out of this one and that uh, our government is a little bit more responsive and responsible. And Oh, dear God. Um, look after yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers, Stu. Nice to hear from you, mate. I hope you're staying safe. Yes. Are we, are we running out of... Oh, uh, yes, yes, Brian and I are, 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 are recording um, tracks which we've written together at the moment. Um, there's always a next project, always. Um, Peter and I are doing lots of filming for the Online Academy. So it's, it's about writing and recording and making films. Uh, my studio is bristling with cameras and lights and all sorts of things. So there's exciting things going on, and I think I've probably got that in common with most people that, that create art in some way, that, that there's always something. There's this ridiculous surge of energy and, and optimism that comes with the territory. I feel a bit foolish sometimes, waking up at 4 o'clock, thinking, right, come on in the studio. Wee I've been doing that since I was 15, and I... I, I still feel the same. It is, it is odd not going out and gigging, but you know, there's, you, you can always fill the time with creating stuff. So it's very precious when people stay in touch online as well. And this is, this is really amazing today because we may be in a big lockdown next week, maybe as early as Monday. Um, so let's just kind of savour this moment and just imagine this place as it, as it has been virtually every time I've been in it, absolutely rammed full of people, drinking hophead, chatting, hugging each other, and having a wonderful time. And this is the most um, incredible community facility that we've got here. So, God, let it stay open. Let it stay open. Yeah. Oh, I got a bigger round of applause on my music, didn't I? <laughs> Anyone got any questions for, for these guys over here? Yeah, sure. No worries, mate. Tomorrow. Yes. The ancient stuff. It's good. It's good to stand corrected there. This is actually. Samain Eve, or Sa Sawain, there are lots of ways of saying that. Sawain, Sain, I've heard it said. But basically, the, the, this, this is the start of the, of the dark bit of the year, and we're leading, we, we've gone past the equinox, we're now at Halloween, and we're leading up to the midwinter solstice, which is um, one of the most magical days, probably the most magical day on the calendar for me. Um, the Christmas tour has completely um, collapsed, other than four rope tackle dates which are still in the diary and there's going to be i've been chatting with nick and amy and brian and the, the durant children and we're going to do a um a live stream on the winter solstice um at the the moment of the solstice and and try and uh, at least keep some of that spirit going if we can't be in well we can't be in a venue because our usual wilmington under the hill venue has sadly had to pull out um but I, it's so beautiful to be marking 
the different sectors of the year in, in, in this way, and it's a big part of my family life. Um, so, yeah, happy, happy New Year to you. I look forward to the Grateful Dead album. <laughs> Be Another question. Is that Jane there? Oh, Sarah, Sarah, sorry. Oh, blimey. Are you going tonight at midnight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> do that, do that. Oh, I thought he was only going to be there tonight. There's a, there's a midnight swim, apparently, at the bottom of the garden tonight. It's a full moon and it's Halloween, so, you know, you've got to swim that tide. It's quite a big tide as well. So It's like being upstairs on the bus when you're a kid, but swimming, you know. It's that kind of feeling. Are we done? <laughs> yeah. I'm very interested in this. <laughs> yeah, eight months. Jenga's contribution w w was w was wonderful. He plays a lot of kit on on rewilding, and some some of his um, bass bass drum patterns I I nicked and reinforced with some of Brian's bassoons are sitting on those, and some of the bass. So he, ha he had a big uh, a steer on the composition. And we did a lot of music in lockdown. We did uh, Daisy made a series of lockdown videos. She w basically went through my diary and found up all all my old mates that I've been neglecting, and some new mates and and some very old mates, and put together these films. And there's a fantastic version of Tubular Bells on the 21st Century Durrant YouTube channel. Uh, Tubular Bells, where Brian plays the... <laughs> on the contrabassoon. Don't ask me to do that now, please. <laughs> Quite a lot of practice for that. That was a roast up. It's quite a moment. It's quite a moment. Um, if you go on YouTube, I think there's a channel called 21st Century Durrant. But it's, it's the Daisy Lockdown films. There's a cracking tubular bells. There's a very good reasons to be cheerful as well if you need cheering up. Another question. We do. We do play together. In, in fact, yeah, um, I don't mean to go on about it, but some of the lockdown. Uh, videos were actually playing live, and uh, there were some very, very beautiful mics in in the studio, and we, we were able to just we we uh, we'd give each other a a good roast up over about an hour of rehearsing, nagging each other, Janga saying you know do this and that, and then we stick a couple of mics up and just play. And the v the very last lockdown video is, is uh, Daisy's sister. They're on YouTube, yeah. The last one we, we did, um, Wish You Were Here on ukulele, just with us all singing, and Jango playing the cajon. And that, yeah, there's a lot of live stuff on there, and we do play. We do play a lot as a family. Doubtless tonight, before the swim, because we might better play afterwards. <laughs> Peter.
gosh, this uh, this might be slightly the blind leading the blind, because um, I bunked off early from the same establishment as Richard, Royal College, because I'd realised that um, what I thought was my life career, i.e. playing bassoon at the back of an orchestra for 40 years, was about the worst thing I could possibly do. I don't know whether I was rebelling late or just carrying on rebelling, but I, I decided that um, I'd probably be a square peg in a round hole. They don't appreciate you embellishing little bits between <laughs> phrases of the Mozart Hafner Symphony, <laughs> for instance. Uh, however appropriate they might seem to me at the moment. Um, <laughs> and I also wanted to be involved in uh, writing um, new music rather than merely, well, I say merely, recreating music that had already gone before. And uh, that's why I'm not really qualified to answer this question at all. Um, how to get out of music college, I can give, um, I can give lots of information on that. Um, just keep doing what you're doing and show your music to people who you respect and get feedback from them. Don't get discouraged if they're not too pleased with it because it's, it's the same with, I suspect, anybody who writes music. Some of it ain't so great and you just have to put that to one side. But if you write enough, it's like throwing enough mud at the wall. Some will stick and some will be beautiful mud on that wall. Um, so perseverance furthers, as the I Ching says. And every good luck for your music college aspirations. Well said, well said. I think, I think the writing thing is very important, actually. Um, writing has been something which has kind of changed my life in a way, and um, yes. Brian's writing as well. So if, if you play an instrument, write. Write for the instrument. And others. And others, of course. Otherwise, you'd just be writing for contrabassoon all the time, which might be, you know... <laughs> yes. Somewhat limiting, yes. yes. High rumble factor. Yes, question at the back there. Hey, Penny! Good to see you, Penny. Thanks for all the inspiration. Hello. This is Penny from Nep. Penny Green. I think bird song always inspires. My my fa my, my favourite bird is the skylark, and there's there's skylark all over Stringhenge. There's a whole section actually, probably about the best part of a minute, where it's just a skylark, and then a blackbird takes over. So I've, I've worked with bird song before. I haven't pra I haven't copied any phrases or turns or sounds. I just I just like to use it because you can't you can't do any better than that. So I try and just have it living in the track. And there are times when the turtle doves come through and times when you hear the nightingale. Brian plays the recorders on the album. So he was playing a lot of sopranino, a, a variety of recorders, actually. And we did some stuff. We recorded it wild, which means you don't play along to anything. And I just asked him, Brian, to just play random, beautiful-sounding notes, which is actually quite a big ask. And then those were flowing in, some lovely things that he did. I just flew them in against the bird song. So the, ro the wild soundtrack of the, the field recordings was, I suppose they were Brian's field recordings really. I got Brian just to talk his language on the recorder. Well, they were just little, little phrases, little... Um <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, but the birds got the lead. Uh, they did, yes. Yeah. In case stage you get any stage central. <laughs> oh, marvellous. Um, we need to wrap it up, folks. Um, I c I'd just like to thank you all for turning out again and, 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 and the whole team. Please do stay safe and stay in touch. And at 4.37 this afternoon, Rewilding can be heard on all the streaming services. If you pre-ordered it and you wonder why you haven't been able to listen to it on Spotify or Apple Music, Amazon, Google, all that stuff, um, 
then you will be able to do so as the sun dips over the sea in Shoreham. So thank you so much once again. Thank you, team, and thank you, Rope Tackle, and I hope to see you. Maybe the Christmas gigs will go ahead, uh, go ahead here. I don't yet know, but I hope, hope to see you soon and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.